Our next guest wears several hats in the creative industry, but they all have a common thread, which is storytelling. Ngendo Moki is a Kenyan artist, photographer, filmmaker, and animator, and of course the genius behind the critically acclaimed short film Yellow Fever, which criticizes women who use skin bleaching products. The Royal College of Art and Rhode Island School of Design graduate is back with her latest body of work titled Nairobi Berries. Muki joins us now in studio to tell us more. Nairobi Berries. Okay. Catchy, beautiful sounding title. What was the inspiration behind it? Tell us all about it and welcome to Morning Life. Hey, thanks for having me. So, um, Nairobi Berries um, is a virtual reality film and I was trying to create a dreamscape that was capturing the different feelings I have about living in Nairobi. So the really beautiful parts of our city that make my creativity bloom and feed me so much as opposed to the dark grittiness that is always sort of threatening us on a daily basis, which you would understand living in Josie as well. So it's a virtual reality film and you can make this beautiful landscape, uh, this sort of dreamscape. And that's what I was doing when I was making this film. And I added animation and we're underwater at some points and it's just a really lovely medium to use to explore emotion in a visual way. And what is so different from just a normal film and this virtual reality? I mean, how, how does it work? Describe, describe it to us. So when you're watching virtual reality, you have a headset. So maybe a Samsung Gear or you could have a Google Cardboard and it's on your head and when you're turning, you're inside the film. Oh. So this is why I'm saying it's so powerful to make a dreamscape because you're completely cut off from whatever is happening around you. You're not engaging with other people. You're, it fills the entire field of your vision and you become part of the story. So. And you're Kenyan. Yes. Tell us about what you think are some of the most beautiful uh, things about Nairobi that you have captured in this body of work. Um, I've also written a poem. So the, I wrote a poem first about um, different things about Nairobi and it's just like there are some small details I really enjoy about living in Nairobi and I speak about something as simple as having masala tea in the afternoon and you're just sitting in the heat, you're drinking masala tea. We have really beautiful fauna as well, and it's just different parts of the city. I don't really know how to <laughs> <laughs> sum that up. Yeah. yeah. And, and so as a, a young African artist, what does it mean for you to be a part of the 2017 Encounter South Africa International Documentary? And uh, you, 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 sort of what do you hope will come out of this as an artist? Well... It's really interesting. This is the first time that I've made a film and then so quickly after I'm going into film festivals. We finished this film around February and already we've been in Berlin. Um, I've talked about it in Finland. I'm now here and it's just very exciting to be able to finish something and to start rolling almost immediately into film festivals. And in terms of being on the continent, it's really exciting and it's we are sort of pioneering virtual reality filmmaking on the continent as artists. So mm -hmm. it's not just me who's um, made this film. There's uh, other films that were made through the New Dimensions program uh, through Electric South. So five artists on the continent got to make virtual reality films. And that means that we're really branching in different ways. Like it's not the way that virtual reality is being used right now commercially. It's very creative and very different. And you wear so many different hats. I yes. mean, Geez, your CV is, is quite impressive and the kind of things that you do is quite impressive from an arts perspective. How do they all link into making you the creative that you are? Um, I think what actually happened is that I was required to choose a major. I was in film animation and video when I was at the Rhode Island School of Design and we were required to choose one major from those and I just sort of dodged <laughs> the moment of choice for as long as possible. So when I came out, I was animating and editing and shooting on my own film. So this has just continued from that point. All right. I just want to talk about Yellow Fever. I mean, what mm. do you think uh, was it about it that resonated so much with audiences? Actually, I think the thing is, uh, you mentioned that I was, it, the film was criticizing women who bleach their skin. This is not true at all. Like My film was trying to discover why we do this. Mm. So and I, I think that is the reason why... 
um, the film had so much resonance because I wasn't criticizing people for bleaching their skin. I was looking at society and saying, we are the ones who have created a situation that encourages women to want to bleach their mm. skin. If you can have a better partner, get more money, get a mm. better job because your skin is a different tone, then can you really fault women who end up doing these mm. things? And it's named Yellow Fever after the song by Fela Kuti. That, and his song, his song was criticizing women who are bleaching their skin. Mine was trying to be from a different perspective. All right, fantastic. Really trying to get into the core yes. of why we do why. this, uh, you know, skin bleaching and mm. so forth. Well, fantastic. Yeah. That is Kenyan filmmaker and photographer Nendo Muki speaking to us about her film titled Nairobi Berries, which will headline the 2017 Encounter South African International Documentary Film Festival that's taking place from the 2nd to the 4th of June in Johannesburg.